Okay, we decided to start this year off by taking a little break, a little time out, and rather than head out of town with the air travel being so crazy the way it is right now, we're deciding to take a staycation. So I hope you enjoy this video. It's just gonna be a few days here in Spokane. Maybe you can take some inspiration from it and do some of the things that we do on your trip. Okay, so we just checked into the Davenport Hotel. We got here really early, but they were able to get us into a room right away, which was awesome. First order of business is to get some coffee and a little bit of a bite to eat, and then go and check out Riverfront Park. Every time we bring people to Spokane, Visitors always comment on the fact that they don't expect this huge river to be right in the middle of it. It's one of the most beautiful things about this area. It's integrated into downtown. It's one of the reasons why Spokane was founded where it was. And it provides power for Washington as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's wildlife, there's history, and it's everywhere you go downtown. So you got the numerica sky ride here it takes you across the falls it's only a few hundred feet though you can get a really good view of the falls from the monroe bridge just here that's the way i'd recommend doing it Okay, so that clock tower that you can see behind me is part of an older building that was part of the old railways that ran through here. They destroyed the rest of the building, but they kept the clock tower in place, and I'm glad they did. It's one of the most iconic landmarks here in Spokane. All right, we're gonna go check out one of the restaurants here at the Davenport, it's called Palm Court. It's based in the lobby of the Davenport. It looks absolutely beautiful. So let's go check it out. So, what are we doing today, Renee? We are going to take a little tour here of the hotel, because it's a historic, beautiful hotel we'd like to learn more about. And then head to one of the most beautiful churches here in Spokane. You can see from almost anywhere you are in Spokane. Um, and then we'll go to Manitou, and then we'll get lunch and continue on from there. Sounds good. As you can see, we're dressed in the appropriate Pacific Northwest Traveler attire. So, let's enjoy the day. All right, we're going to check out this walking tour. All right, that was St. John's Cathedral. What did you think, Renee? Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. I would say, I mean, you can go in and just check it out for the architecture and the history, but we did stop in for a service and it was super relaxed and cool people. And um, yeah, I would say must see in Spokane. Yeah, absolutely. I've driven past that place a ton of times and never stopped in. Being from the UK, I love that old world architecture and that's one of the best architectural buildings in Spokane. There are a lot of other architectural buildings that you can check out, but um, that's the one that we chose. So now we're gonna move on, look at Manitou Park. Okay, so this Northwest Museum of Arts and Culture. More of an art gallery than a museum, but um, you know, we enjoyed it. Yeah. It's only 10 bucks, so it's worth it. We didn't feel like spending a lot of money, so we just decided to go to My Fresh Basket and get some deli food instead. Um, we ate that in the room with a bottle of wine, which was nice. So, what are we doing now, Renee? Well, we have a tie-breaking game to play. One of our first dates here in Spokane ever was at Plastic Fun. Um, a little mini golf, indoor mini golf course, downtown Spokane. And Phil and I have played probably a, like almost 10 games since then and are legitimately tied. We're tied. So we'll see. So it's personal. Flat Six Pub is really cool. It's just like Renee said, it's a mini golf course. They've got really good beer and they've got good food. They've also got a ton of games that kids can enjoy. They've got- um, Giant Jenga. Giant Jenga. Um, they've got, what's the game on the board called? I have no idea. They've got board games there as well. So uh, yeah, let's go check it out. Oh. <laughs> You'll be 
is sad to know that it's still a tie in the household. <laughs> it's still a tie. It's still a tie. I won the second game convincingly. So we're just going to have to play on. Yeah. All right, back to the hotel. <laughs> play on. Okay, Renee, where are we going? So we're headed to Dry Fly's tasting room for lunch today. I think it's connected to No Lies tasting room, which is beer and spirits here in Spokane. And we're taking the Centennial Trail to get there. Mm -hmm. Centennial Trail is beautiful. It takes you all along the Spokane River. It's a beautiful place just to walk up and down, relax, unwind. Yeah, let's check it out. So Dry Fly is not here anymore. So change your website, Dry Fly. <laughs> Um, but there's a big building, much like a lot of the buildings here in Spokane, they're kind of communal now, where there's a no light tasting room, two big no light tasting rooms, a hair salon, and we found like a secret Thai restaurant right on the water, and it looks good, it's got great reviews, so we're looking forward to being surprised. So, after trying to visit a restaurant that doesn't exist anymore for lunch, we are going to one that does exist for dinner. Where are we going, Renee? There's a new-ish Mexican restaurant in Kennelly Yards, which is a really sweet little subset of Spokane called Mole. Super good. Renee was telling me she's got clients that have businesses in Kendall Yards, and she was telling me that they're starting to refer to it as the cork district, like a wine cork given the number of wineries and things there. So if you're into that, then this might be an area you, you want to check out. I guess that's Willy Willy Rock. We're back from the trip and the staycation was a success. We want to do the city justice by highlighting the best things about the trip, a couple things that we do differently, and a couple things we'd like to do if the season was right. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we went there in winter. We did that deliberately, firstly, because we needed a break. Secondly, because everything that we did, you can do any season. Whereas if we went hiking, you wouldn't necessarily be able to do that. If you visited when it's raining, for example. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is your, what was your highlight favorite part of our staycation? I think actually doing a staycation is the highlight. When you live in a city, the temptation is just to go to your gym, the grocery store and work and not really look around you. You know, I've fallen victim to doing that a number of times in different cities that I've lived in. So it was really nice to actually be a tourist in my own city. Mm -hmm. I think mine was kind of the same, but realizing sort of the character of the place that we live in rather than the pros and cons, just kind of recognizing the industry, the history, the art and culture that we're around and definitely diving into what people see when they're here. That's like, you know, first impression rather than what's the traffic like and <laughs> um, grocery stores and stuff. Yeah, there's a lot more history here than I had bargained for. So that's something that I am going to come back and check out a little bit more. What was your least favorite part? My least favorite part, traveling around Spokane in a vehicle is next to impossible. I also thought that the Davenport's pool and spa area was a little lacking, considering how nice the rest of the hotel was. That's true. So parking wise, so we kind of hit a gem, a local gem here with a place called, what was it, City Ramp? Yep, City Ramp. City Ramp, owned by somebody since like the 30s, him and his family. It was a really cool historic building. It was valet parking and it was $8 a day and night. So it's $8. Hours. It's the only place I'd recommend anybody park if they're coming to the city. Super cool. Super friendly. All right, Renee, what was your least favorite part? And I think, I think for me, I, I don't like eating out as much as you do on vacation. So I liked being able to go to my fresh basket. But it was hard to like keep going and wanting to see there's so much food there's so much good food in the city but it's like impossible to indulge in three days all of the things that you want to you just you know you need to take a breather in real life <laughs> that's right so i already mentioned that a lot of the things we did were in winter and we did that deliberately so that you can do everything we did here without having to worry about the weather 
A couple of things we would do though, if it was summer, for example, we want to go hiking, maybe mountain biking, maybe go out on the lake and fish as well. There's good golfing, there's certainly good water sports like kayaking, hiking really close to the city, um, Bowling Pitcher, Dishman, places like that, even going out to Green Bluff, I think, in the fall. Yeah, so if you are coming in the summer and you want to do some of those outdoor things, remember to get your park pass, it's not that expensive. And if you're visiting in the winter, you can do winter sports as well. You can go skiing, snowboarding, snowshoeing, whatever you want to do there too. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you got some good inspiration for your trip here to Spokane. If you've got any questions, as always, feel free to reach out. My details will be in the description to this video. And Phil can get you a discount at Davenport. I can also get you a discount at the Davenport that I went to. So reach out to me about that too.